As soon as it gets dark, thunder begins to reverberate around the airport. The researchers board the planes on what looks like a promising night. At 9 p.m., the two jets take off. They're heading for thunderclouds 120 miles away that are vigorously producing lightning. The cabin is in constant communication with Yair and Lyons at Yucca Ridge. Essentially, they want some kind of a central location. He evaluates the data and gives the pilots the latitude and longitude of large thunderclouds where sprites might appear. For reference, we'll be on this uh, data collection run for about 10 minutes. Outside the window, they see a huge thundercloud begin to glow with lightning. Oh, it's here. Lightning. Quite promising. Somewhere in the darkness above the cloud, they are hoping a sprite will occur. The high-speed camera is adjusted slightly upwards to shoot the area above the flashing thunderclouds. Jeff McCarr, who has spent 20 years chasing sprites, can barely contain his excitement. But Yair and Walt Lyons on the ground can see an unexpected change in the thundercloud. They are here, and if they go like this, they would get this part, but... You know, both of them are starting to weaken. The large thundercloud that was expected to grow has started to split in two. They've been in the air for five hours with no sign of those elusive sprites. And now, the lightning is quickly losing momentum. Despite the promising forecast and their careful preparation, they have no choice but to return to the airport defeated. It was horrible. Yeah. I've seen uh, much larger storms, you know, where you get really large sprites that happen pretty often, and this was just too small. We'll see. Fingers crossed for the next one. Good night. Good night, everybody. They realize this will not be easy. On the 4th of July, while people all over America are celebrating, the Sprite team hurries to the airport. They've been waiting for the right kind of weather for a week. Finally, new storm clouds powerful enough to generate sprites have appeared. So if we go like here... If it, we don't see lots of sprites, and this starts to get more intense, then I may want to extend up. Maybe we should just go, yeah, so go, we go, as, as, go, go as soon as they get ready, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. Both planes take off into a stormy sky. While Denver watches fireworks below, they prep the cameras and get ready. 30 seconds. They start to see flashes of lightning below. On the ground, Yair and Lyons are trying to figure out the best way to position the planes. But then they would have to turn down, or do you want well, them they, to circumvent well, it? Well, can they punch through and come around the other back? I the go all the way and up then... to about 47 degrees and, and see if they can punch through it. The two thunderclouds shown in deep blue have collided, and major cloud development has begun. Yeah, maybe it's like... They send the coordinates of the strongest lightning to the team in the air. Outside, lightning flashes are everywhere. A monster cloud with a diameter of more than 300 miles is releasing electricity with frightening intensity. The scientists rush to position their gear. The frustration and anticipation of the previous week is getting to them, and tension in the cabin is high. For an instant, a giant red flash appeared. On replay, they can see beautiful shafts of light thrusting upwards towards space. The mysterious sprite in all its glory. 
then the sprites keep coming. On board, the team reviews the stunning and unique images. This sprite was shaped like a mangrove tree. It's been captured in more detail than any sprite until now. Just like its name, this sprite evokes a fairy with wings. Yeah, very big jellyfish. It's pretty. Very pretty. It indeed looks like a jellyfish with many tentacles. Sprites of many different forms appear, one after another. Seen up close, they have a variety of shapes. Eventually, a sprite appears that demands special attention. This is spectacular. The umbrella-like top of this sprite reaches an altitude of around 60 miles. That's the altitude of the air glow layer that appeared in Furukawa's footage from the International Space Station. The image confirms that sprites interact with the ionosphere. Now it's time for the high-speed camera. It's designed so that when a sprite is sighted and the button is released, the previous three seconds of footage will be saved. This is the momentary flash of a sprite taken by the super-sensitive camera. And when shot by the high-speed camera, it looks like this. In just a few hundredths of a second, countless particles of light rain down. This is the first time a sprite's formation has ever been revealed in such detail. During the night, 14 sprites were captured by the high-speed camera. 8,000, yes, very good. What else will the footage reveal? With great expectations, they return to the ground. Yeah. Not too bad, huh? Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It was fabulous. It was amazing. I haven't seen anything like that ever. The long night is over, but they know their work is just beginning. Back in Denver, the team gathers to make some scientific sense out of their spectacular sprite footage. The halo above and the elf below, and that's just because it's expanded out in front. Right. Right. At first glance, this sprite may seem to burst up from the storm clouds towards space. But when seen by the high-speed camera, the movement looks completely different. Bursts of light appear out of the center, spreading both up and down. In fact, when examined in slow motion, it appears that sprite formation is more complicated than early reports had indicated. And what about this sprite shaped like angel's wings? With this one too, bursts of light suddenly appear out of darkness. They go down, and the next moment up, and then down again. They change their direction as they unfold. So what is really happening? Within the sprite, electrons are colliding with charged particles in the atmosphere. 
creating a pathway for the electrons to travel. Where they go depends on the concentration of electrons and the composition of the atmosphere. Sprites are beautiful and intriguing. But do they actually have a role to play in Earth's upper atmosphere? Yukihiro Takahashi is investigating the aftermath of a sprite. Once the electrons cut open a path, the atmosphere around it becomes highly electrified. Following the sprite's path, a large electric current continues to flow from the thundercloud to the ionosphere, which shows up as the air glow in many sprite images. The sprite flashes only for an instant, but at the moment when it flashes, a conductive path is created. The electrified path doesn't disappear when the flash ends, but stays there for a while. The effects are thought to last several seconds to minutes. The result is a massive transfer of electric charge in the space between the cloud and the ionosphere. The team also successfully captured a sprite from different angles, as they had originally planned, using high-speed cameras placed on the two aircraft. By combining the images from the two cameras, the three-dimensional structure of the sprite becomes apparent. A large number of electrons collide with the atmosphere, creating brilliant bursts of light and opening channels where the electrons can flow. Each sprite channel can be hundreds of yards wide. A sprite event is like a switch that turns on an electric current in the space between the Earth and the ionosphere. In fact, our planet is surrounded by electric current from the surface to the edge of space. Like lightning, sprites help to complete a global circuit, allowing charge to flow continuously around the Earth. But sprites reach much farther than lightning. And unlike lightning, sprites can transfer charge into the ionosphere, to the edge of space. Not only that, but the bolts of lightning that create the sprites are so powerful that they literally reverberate around the world.